Are you ready to say goodbye to the constant ups and downs of the artist income roller coaster? Whether you're a full-time artist who wants to increase and stabilize your income, a part-time musician who wants to go full-time, or a hobbyist who needs to fund your passion projects, this podcast will equip you with the tools, resources, and inspiration to make it happen. My name is Bree Noble. I'm a musician, best-selling author, and educator whose mission is to help musicians like you to increase the income you're already making and tap into new income streams so you can create a more diverse, stable, reliable income from music and finally ditch the starving artist mentality. Now let's dive into The Profitable Musician Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Bree Noble and welcome to the podcast. And I am really happy today to be back here with a former guest, Alex Love, also known as the Awakened Creative on social media. And I I think I realized it has actually been a year and a half since I interviewed him, which seems crazy to me because that seems like yesterday. Um, But I think it actually has been a year and a half at least. So at least a year and a half since he's been on the show. Um, So I still am captivated by his social media content. Every time that I go on Instagram, it pops up for me and I'm like, how does he come up with this stuff? So um, that's why I wanted to have him back on. I want to have him talk about like what has changed in the last year and a half, what is always the same and you know how he kind of helps our artists to navigate social media. Um, but before we get into that, why don't you just give them just a little background in case they didn't listen to that episode before of you know how you got involved in music and how you help artists. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you very much. It's great to be back. It's good to see you. And uh, yeah, so I have been a musician my whole life. I I won't go too deep into that, but basically ever since I was a kid, I've been making music, exploring music. Um, I have always kind of been on the side of like the service-based side, if that makes sense. So before I did what I'm doing now, I was um, working as like a music producer, kind of composer, you know, service-based thing. Um, before that, I was studying music. Before that, I was playing music. I was playing in a Steadfords. I was playing in bands and doing piano lessons and that kind of thing. So it's just been this kind of gradual journey from making music and loving it and going deeper and deeper into that. And then sort of gradually shifting over the last, I'd say, 10-ish years from just making my own music. And it's sort of just being something that I love to do to starting to find the value in helping other musicians with with various things. And from, you know, producing music for other people and doing, you know, little compositions and stuff like that, um, to, to actually helping musicians with building their presence and social media and marketing and branding and all of that, that came about really kind of naturally and and I don't want to say unexpectedly, but I just started to get really interested in the marketing side. Um, I think I said this last time I was on I was on your show. I just realized it was actually kind of super creative and and super fun and um, not at all what I used to think that it was. And so I fell in love with marketing and branding. I started helping musicians on social media in a really casual way, like not in a, not in an official way or anything like that. I was putting some stuff out there and, and sort of building up a personal brand and a little sort of music thing. And I started to just like kind of give other people advice. They'd reach out and say like, how are you doing this? Like, how are you getting this result? And blah, blah, blah. And it's, I just sort of started pointing people in the right direction that kind of kept working and it kind of kept getting better and better. The more I learned, the more I shared. And then I just eventually kind of graduated to an official, someone who had enough experience with this stuff, with helping musicians create real fans or create some sort of, you know, some sort of presence or something like that. I turned it into like kind of a career myself. And then I started helping other people turn it into a career. And it just kind of, it kind of kept building from there. So every time I would figure out how to do something, I would share it. And then from that experience, I would figure out how to do something else. And then I would share that. And it's just kind of snowballed or stacked up from there. Which so I, I think don't, is, I don't have is a, how yeah. all great businesses are born, really. You know, you get a result for your yourself and then other people are like how are you doing that and then you help them do it and then you know other people see that and then more people come your way so that seems like a really natural turn of events that's exactly it it's just solving problem after problem after problem and um yeah now now i've kind of got this this whole stack of problems that i have so i have solved sorry and i have been able to help other musicians solve and so what i've been doing the last i'd say four or five years is 
trying to solve the, I would say, mostly the fundamental problems that musicians have as related to social media. Um, and that's, you know, how do you get yourself seen and how do you get yourself heard and how do you get people to stick around and where's the best place to be and what sort of stuff should you put out and, and all of that kind of thing. So that's that's been my main focus over the last four Five years. Yeah, and those are big problems for musicians. I mean, there, there's they a are. lot for them to 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 swallow, and and it gets them very frustrated for sure. I'm assuming that this is a different answer for every artist, right? The, whether, you know, which platforms they should be on and how they should show up and all that, it's always different for each artist. How do you kind of get to the the baseline of what that is for each artist? Yeah, good question. It, the answer is experimentation. Um, I, I basically nowadays, I cannot tell you too much uh, beyond the really basic fundamentals, which I'm happy to talk about, but I can't really tell you too much until you've tried some stuff. Um, I am... Still surprised by this, and Gary V was right. <laughs> Dang um, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, again, he was right about social media again. I am getting so many reports now of Facebook and YouTube shorts, or basically anything that's not TikTok being the better platform for artists and this is different for everyone but it, it it's not it's not so easy nowadays to say you should definitely be on this platform you should definitely be on TikTok you should definitely be on Instagram because there are you know for every every artist I say that to or every artist I think could benefit from that platform there's a hundred examples of something else working and so it just this just keeps happening and I've reached the point where I, I now need to say, let's take some stuff. Let's take some content and some, some whatever. Let's put it out on all of the places that you might like to be. And let's see what happens for a bit. Let's just try it for, say, a month or something like that. And then let's see. And then let's let's look at the data and let's make a decision about what we should do moving forward. So, yeah, it's it's definitely different for every artist. And there is there is almost no obvious sign nowadays, which is kind of weird to say out loud, but there's almost no obvious sign that one platform is going to be better for someone than the others. If mm -hmm. maybe if you're the kind of musician who's very okay with building like a personal brand, you know, on social media, something, something TikToky or Instagrammy can be really, really good. And and I will usually say you probably want to you probably want to try and be on at least one of them. But I'm just so surprised lately at how how varied the results are across different platforms and for different artists. There are people, I don't know if you're aware of this, this current TikTok, just just this devastating drop in in views for like half the artists on there. They've they've gone from thousands of views to under 50. They can't get it past 50 views. Yeah, it's this, it's everyone's saying it's about, it, you know, it's about the, the potential ban or whatever, but I just don't see how that kind of lines up practically. But there's this, in the last, I'd say three weeks, I've had all of these people coming and saying, why have my views suddenly dropped to, some people can't even get 10 views on the platform. Oh, that's weird. I've noticed mine got cut in half in the past week. And keep in mind, we're recording this in May. I know this isn't going to come out until August. Uh, so who knows what it'll be like in August. But mm. um you know, mine, I did notice like all of a sudden, like they're completely cut in half, which is crazy. Yeah, this is this is really common. I actually haven't been posting on TikTok lately, but I would say maybe not half, but a decent amount. I've got I've got a bunch of people in um, a course at the moment, It's probably about 100 people in there. And I, I talk to maybe 30 of them on a regular basis. And of those 30, I would say maybe close to 15 of them have just seen this sudden drop like it's it's either cut their views in half like yours or it's just gone it's it's absolutely abysmal it's it's literally not worth being on the platform and mm. i don't know if it's a glitch or whatever but one thing is for sure the reason i'm bringing this up is that tiktok is not the the the, the be all end all anymore it is not the this is the way to go and without this you're you're in trouble kind of thing it, it is just i really i really looking at all of the information that i have i cannot see a clear pattern of one particular platform being just a hundred percent this is what you have to do you just have to be on this and this is the one that works best it just there's just too much too much evidence now to to suggest that it is all up in the air and experimentation is i think the only way that artists can figure out the right path for themselves, at least as a as a starting point. Which I think is is good and bad, right? Like if for whatever reason, the kind of content you make just doesn't resonate on TikTok, well, then you're not out of the game, right? Because then, you know, there maybe you belong somewhere else and those other places can work. I'm curious, are there like lots of burgeoning platforms that are coming out, you know, random ones that are new that people could get on and maybe like 
make a quick following. Like I remember, you know, Sean Mendez and Vine and, you know, those ones that were like popular, super popular, and then they were gone, but they made a few people popular. Or is it still kind of the Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter or X, you know, and TikTok? as the main one. And maybe, I don't know, what about LinkedIn? Do you encourage that one? Uh, I don't, I don't encourage LinkedIn, but that's, I don't really know that much about it. Um, and for the, for the types of artists that I've been working with lately, I don't, I'm, sh I'm sure there's something there. I'm sure that there is. I just don't really know much about it, but I, I mean, it, I think it's good to be everywhere if, if you can manage it in terms of, in terms of sort of new platforms, I think there are a lot of things coming out that are trying to solve different problems like i think that they're they're trying to avoid sort of musicians having to be content creators like in a lot of cases you know you know how there's like um what's it called like station head which is sort of like um like a broad street uh, what's the word like a broadcasty Mm. sort of radio type thing I, I don't know too much about it at this point um th there's a lot of stuff like that sort of coming out where it's a it's kind of like an alternative way for musicians to get heard but i found that in all of these cases there's still the um, there's still the problem of having to get attention, like having to get that initial attention so that these things can work properly for you. So I'm jumping around a bit here, but I'll, I'll also say, you know, there's like Substack and there's like threads now, which are writing, mm -hmm. you know, predominantly writing things. These are surprisingly, I don't have much experience with Substack, but threads, I'm getting a surprising amount of reports that that is actually really helping. Um, I have an artist or two in the course at the moment who they are growing quite steadily on on threads and they they've also seen a bit of a or at least one of them has seen a bit of an uptick in streams and she feels it's directly related to to threads that's super interesting to me because it's just a you know it's x essentially twitter and substack i think is a, a potential or that kind of thing is a potential avenue for really any creative who, who doesn't mind writing, but also musicians. I think that I'm sure you've maybe heard some discussion about like the long form thing. Um, I feel like people in general are moving away from this, this quick, short, sharp video, sensationalized titles and hooks and all of that, um, flashy, fast edits and everything. And they're starting to look for more substance, um, more authenticity, more stuff that feels, I, I feel, I, I feel this myself. I'm tired. I'm tired of super flashy stuff. I feel like a lot of people feel like this and people want now, they want something that isn't just, you know, like this all the time. They want to be able to put something on and listen or read or watch. And it's just kind of just a bit more relaxed and a bit more real. So this is a this is a sort of very messy answer, but I would say that I think that the main, you know, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, TikTok, assuming TikTok picks itself up and it doesn't go away, I think that there's still a lot of value in those because there is this, there is still this need, no matter what, to generate a lot of attention in a specific way in order for musicians to achieve what they want, which is to grow and develop and nurture a real fan base, right? Or a, a real client base or whatever it is. There's a there's something about this, this, these short form platforms that just allow for a very they're just still good for discoverability, I, I guess is a simple way to put it. And and they're also good for like I feel like people now associate these platforms with like these are the gateways, you know, these are where people find people and then they go to these other places. So yeah, I, I think yeah. that's true. Gate I like the idea of gateways and I'm really glad to hear that you're saying that longer form, more authentic. I, I find myself gravitating toward that. If I'm on TikTok, I don't want that quick hit stuff. I don't want that, you know, 15 second you know, piece of, of a, of a hook of a song with a message on it. Like I, I could care less about that. If someone has something to say that is like really, you know, really eating at them that day and they just want to go on a rant or they want to, you know, really talk about something deeply. Those are the things that tend to draw me in. Mm. So that's exciting to me. And of course, being a podcaster, that's long form, right? So, yes. and I'm using, like you said, as gateways, I'm using things like TikTok and Instagram Reels and Facebook Reels as a like, here's a little clip, you know, here's a little taste. Like when you go to Costco, here's a little taste. And then you can come over here to my podcast and and hear a lot more. 
And I think that's a great use for that. And for musicians, it's obvious that that can be done with a piece of a song or maybe like mm. a, a piece of a, a story, like a little tidbit about what you've, you know, a song you've written and how it got written. And then, you know, you could encourage them to watch the whole video or watch or read the whole article or whatever. Is that one way that you encourage them to use it like a gateway? Yeah, definitely. That's that's exactly it. And and uh, I mean, I I you know, it's funny because I have always sort of said you should treat these short form platforms as not as a as a pit stop on the way to something else, but as the kind of final destination. And the the mindset behind that is that you create so much value on the platform that they they themselves, the, the the person watching or listening or whatever, they then want to go and explore further. And that's kind of always been the philosophy or whatever. But that being said, that is kind of what I mean. I still mean gateway. Um, when when I say that. And I, I do want to say as well, the short snippet of music thing with the, you know, the 15 second thing, it still can work. It still can work. It's just that, as you've demonstrated, people are becoming more desensitized to it. It's not, we're not so impressed anymore by just the fact that you're a musician and you've managed to you've managed to use a certain content format you know it, it's not enough now to just be a musician to just be an artist and put the how do i explain this i'm trying to think of the best way to to explain this it's not enough to just take a content format have your music and put a you know a hook that people use and for that to just always be enough sometimes that can work but for those snippets to kind of work now, or what I've seen anyway, there needs to be a lot more personalization, a lot more sort of, you know, that format tweaked to fit the individual scenario and that kind of thing. And those are the types of things that I'm still finding people respond to. So I'm, I'm trying to give you an example. I'm going to try and think of an example here. So, okay, there are, I'm sure you've seen these, these posts. Congratulations, you've stumbled on this artist who's not too big to reply to every comment blah, 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 blah. It's like a TikTok style post like that. I have, just to be clear, I have people who are doing this and it's working, but I think the reason that it's working for them is because we've been through the process of figuring out like, what's the artist identity here? How can we make this really specific and, you know, really tailored to your own, your own stuff so that when people come across this, they have this really clear idea of who they're getting and, and if they want to engage with this, instead of it just being, I'm a musician, check out my stuff, I'm using this sort of generic format or whatever it is. hope that's making sense. Um, I'm, I'm just sort of saying that those, those short snippets of sharing your music can still work, but I feel like there's much more importance nowadays on, it's less about the format and it's more about the, the, the individual artist and the appeal of that individual artist and all of the things that come with that. You know, it's the look, the feel, the, the vibe, the mood, the aesthetic, um, the, the story and all of that. Yeah, no, I get that. And so I was curious um, because your posts for your brand, The Awakened Creative, are very stylized, right? I, when I see one, I'm like, oh my gosh, that, you know, like I immediately know it's yours, right? It, is that just because that is what has worked for you? Or do you encourage artists to like experiment with a bunch of things and then find kind of a thing that works for them and then have maybe a common thread between all of their posts so people immediately recognize it's their post? Absolutely. Yeah. So so the reason that they work for me is, I'll try and keep this quick, but they work because of the the messages and the messages are consistent. So when people when people encounter the posts, they they kind of know what to expect. And and hopefully they're going to get some sort of helpful or inspiring or encouraging message. So that's that's important because that's got nothing to do with hooks or flashy animations or whatever it is. That's really important is that once people are in the door and they've come to learn what to expect, that's what's keeping those posts performing on a, on a near daily basis. Um, but beyond that, the animations are an experiment. I did an experiment sometime last year, probably this time last year. I realized that the the the, the sort of calm but semi-hypnotic type of thing was good for watch time. Um, it was entertaining because, you know, the, the people kind of have a reason to keep watching because there's constantly something moving mm -hmm. and it is it is hopefully kind of aesthetically pleasing. So it was good. It was it was a good practical move, but it is also something that I think separates me from a lot of the other accounts, which helps a lot. Um, I also I've I've listened to feedback from people who said 
some people have said they stopped and followed these, they stopped and listened to these posts because just of my voice, which is so strange I agree. to me. It because does. I, it makes me feel like I'm, you know, I'm in a meditation or something, but I'm also going to learn something. Crazy. Yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's, that's crazy to me because I am just so sick of my own voice. I am, I hate listening to those, those, Aren't we all? those posts. Yeah. <laughs> We're sick of yeah. our own voice. Yes, totally. Um, but, but yeah, also the, I, I talked about this for way too long, way, way longer than I meant to, but also the musicians at the start of every, of every video or for most videos, there is the, the fact that they are animations and the fact that they are all stylistically similar. And the fact that I say the same thing at the beginning, um, I even structure a lot of the posts with the same kind of, you know, sentence structure and that kind of thing. That's all intentional to, um, not only make it sustainable for me, but to, to, to hook people in to give them that instant recognition and just to keep the the whole engine running. And so I will definitely, definitely encourage musicians and any, any creative to do this, to find, let's say a handful of things, and I have exercises for this, but find a handful of things that you want to be sort of known for, or that will be kind of defining characteristics of you on social media. Um, that might be that, you know, it might include content formats, it might include little hooky things like musicians or whatever. Um, it might include, you know, the, the the a certain look. Like I have this guy in the course at the moment. He's done this sort of cyberpunky futuristic kind of thing, and all of his all of his videos look really similar. They're all really purple. Um, he has this certain look, and he's got this, you know, he's even got this kind of mask thing, which is really helpful. That's something that really seems to be paying off. And this is like a, a, a consistent thing that, that I see this, this handful of things that kind of defines you that will not only hook people in, especially after multiple touch points, but also, also really sim like give them a consistent identity and a consistent experience. Yeah. So I, I, I really, really, really encourage artists to have a good think about like if you could let's say let's say that you could come up with like like you know you might describe me on on social media as the music marketing -y music guy who does the animations and who has that you know it's just that calming meditative voice and it's like the encouraging messages if that was a terrible way of explaining it but you could probably explain me to someone without having to even say my name or without having to without having to kind of try too hard to differentiate me from everyone else you know and so that's what i encourage musicians to do is to find find some things about them that you know they're authentic things a handful of things that if if someone had to describe them to someone else and they couldn't say their name or they couldn't remember their name they could describe them to someone else without saying their name and without also describing everyone else does that make sense oh, I'm, it I'm totally sure does I'm... i mean if yeah. i had to explain you like i would say a lot of what you said and i would also say your messages are motivational but they also make you think deeply about your own motivations and they also kind of hold you accountable. I love you know? that. That's perfect. Yeah. Because you're trying to get to musicians to like really take stock of who they are and why they're doing what they're doing. And, you know, not just it's not just like surface level marketing stuff. And then, of course, the, the animations and the soothing tone of your voice are another thing. So that's a really so I encourage everybody to go on Instagram and watch the awakened creative and see what we're talking about. And Thank you'll you. <laughs> see, and this is like a very nice way to get him to get some more followers too, which I think you all should all follow him, but you know, it allows you to see what we're talking about and how it's so clear his branding and what he's about just from the posts that he has. And that's how we should all be on social media. And, you know, I, I think I've accomplished that to some extent. You know, I have a few kinds of posts that I do. Um, but I think a lot of artists tend to think people are going to get bored if I do the same kind of posts all the time. And I would say, and I'm curious to, to hear what you say, I would say, I think if you have a few different kinds of posts, that won't happen. But like what you said earlier, having a certain kind of post that you can kind of create on a, a hamster wheel in a way, <laughs> you know, uh, knowing exactly what needs to be done to get that done makes it possible for you to continue to, cre to create. If you're always having to come up with some new kind of post or new idea, that can really slow you down in, in creation. So I I'd love to hear what you say about the fear of artists that that might make their brand boring. Yeah, sure. So, so first of all, um, totally, totally valid um, concern and, and, 
people do get bored of things. And and also, I'll just very, very quickly say that being able to make this sustainable is an underrated part of of the whole deal. It's a super underrated part of it because this is something that I am about to release a podcast episode on this myself like tomorrow, but it is simply showing up repeatedly nowadays is such a huge part of it. And I know that that is like the most generic advice ever, but it is really true. Like in every single case that I've seen in my personal experience, every single case that I've seen with artists that I work with or talk to or whatever, the ones who are actually getting somewhere showing up repeatedly, they are not flip-flopping and, and, you know, sort of going in and out of consistency and all of that, they are just showing up repeatedly. So I just wanted to say that making it sustainable is a very, very important part of the whole deal. And sometimes, sometimes you have to sacrifice a bit of variety for the sake of sustainability. And I'm not saying that you definitely have to, but let's sort of preface it with that. And then to then to address the concern that people are con- uh, people are concerned that that people will get bored. Some people will will get bored. Some people will um, tune in and out of you. Just that's just life. I lose maybe a thousand followers plus a month. That's just how it goes. It just happens. Everyone, everyone goes through that. You could look at the biggest accounts on social media and they would be losing followers by the thousands every month. It's just the way that it works. Um, you, the idea is that you want to gain more than you you lose every month. But keeping keeping that in mind, just, just the fact that it's just natural for people to kind of come in and out of your world, you know, to varying degrees. Like not everyone's just going to be constantly glued to you 100% of the time. I would say with that in mind, a lot of musicians aren't you can you can get rid of that fear through actually trying stuff out and seeing for yourself but also actually understanding kind of the way that social media works so here's a here's a common thing that happens if you're a musician who hasn't been consistent on social media you you maybe have been posting kind of casually you've been posting like sort of stuff that's not really generating much attention and maybe you have a bit of an audience who's used to you know you showing up once a week and that kind of thing if you suddenly start getting really consistent and you start putting out stuff that is that is repetitive you know it's it all looks the same or whatever you will probably see a bit of a dip in engagement. You may even see a bit of a dip in followers because that's just the way it works. You are, you are, you know, you're letting go of the old stuff in order to make room for the new stuff. So you might have an audience that is used to you barely showing up and just posting a little thing here and there. Once you start being consistent again, it is really common to see this kind of this this dip before it gets better again. And what you'll what you'll typically find is that you sort of feel like you take a step back before you can take a couple of steps forward and the because because the musicians see that they say oh it's because i'm being so repetitive it's because i am all of my stuff looks the same maybe i need a bit more variety and then they start going down all of these paths where they they start thinking like i need to totally change my plan i need to do a whole rebrand i need to do this this overhaul of everything and blah 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 blah. and then what they do is they either end up back at square one because they they just they stop being consistent and then they start again and then it's been five years all of a sudden and they haven't gotten anywhere or they start adding in all of this variety and then the same thing happens they continue to sort of see a bit of a dip and then they go you know what i give up social media is rigged this isn't fair nothing works blah 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 blah. again this is super valid if you don't understand what you're getting into it totally makes sense but what a lot of them don't do and it's really hard because it, it sucks to you know lose followers and, and all of that what they don't understand is that they are kind of they're losing a bit of their old audience who aren't really that interested in them they don't want to see them on a regular basis and you're making room for these new people who are going to eventually consistently come in and engage with you on a regular basis that's a really important thing to know is that it's always kind of darkest before the dawn right like you you um, you experience a dip once you make this big change to show up consistently and then you start seeing more progress once you kind of get over that over that hill to address the concern that it is repetitive it will only feel repetitive if people aren't into it in general so my content is incredibly repetitive incredibly repetitive it is so unbelievably repetitive it's also corny sometimes like I, I can admit that you know but what people get from it is more important than that but also I think that they like the rep- the, the repetition you know I think that it's nice for people to say every morning I wake up and I see this post and it gives me a boost for the day. That repetition is grounding it. It sort of serves as like an anchor and it hopefully makes their lives better. And no, I agree. And like, and the thing is, we have to remember how people consume social media. It's not like they're sitting there watching all your posts at once. 
Exactly. Right. They're they're scrolling. They're seeing their favorite recipe here. And then they're seeing, you know, a music marketing post here. And then they're seeing their favorite artist here. And then they're seeing the Awaken Creative giving them something encouraging. You know, they're not they're kind of looking forward to that. That's why they followed you. Right. They're looking forward to that little hit from you every day. And you don't have to, you know, blow them away with something totally different. That's exactly right. That's that's exactly right. And, um, you know, it, the only reason that they will come across your post every day and say, oh, I think it's good. You know, they are not they are not necessarily looking for you to be everything, you know, for them. They're not looking for they're not looking for me to be their, I don't know, therapist. Right. Or they're not looking for me to be their um, their vocal coach. They're not looking for me to be their entertainment as it relates to something totally different. They're looking for a bit of help, you know, maybe a bit of marketing advice and a bit of encouragement. And that's what they get. And it's generally been pretty consistent. And so with with musicians, that point that you made is is so important that you're super focused as the musician. You're so focused on what you're doing. And it's, you know, it's like the spotlight effect where everyone kind of thinks that people are paying more attention to them than they actually are. And, you know, they, they, they worry that they're putting out all of this stuff consistently and everyone's going to get so bored and you're just doing the same thing and blah, blah, blah. But really everyone's got a billion different things going on every day, just like you said, and they're looking at lots of different stuff. They're going to be happy to, if they like the stuff, to get that sort of that anchor of your familiar stuff. And while we're on that, people like what's familiar to them. That is, I'm sure that you've heard of the familiarity bias. People like that. They, It makes them feel comfortable. It makes them feel safe. It makes them feel grounded. It's a, you know, it's a psychological thing that people over time tend to prefer things that they're more familiar with. So the, the again, this is a messy answer, but the thing that you would want to look out for is you've got to think about what you're giving people. And then you've got to think about what's the thing that they want consistently. And what's the thing what are the what are the ways in which they want variety? So a, a really easy example of this would be if you are if you are an artist and you are giving them a uh, what was the example I used before like a sort of futuristic cyberpunky type thing. You don't want to create you know a different video every day that's a completely different um, you know style or aesthetic or whatever it is because that's People are there for the the cyberpunky futuristic thing, but you may not want to just literally record the exact same video every day and say the exact same thing in the text and just show them the same one exact song every single day because they need variety in that, right? If they like you and they like your brand and they like your music, they're like, what else have you got? You know, keep the cyber, keep the cyberpunk villain um, futuristic thing, but what other music have you got? What else have you got to say? Give me that same message but in a different way, in a slightly different way, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that's important too, because I know with your brand, I have seen you kind of say the same thing, but in a different way, from a different angle, getting them to think about it a different way. But I know you've said it before, you know, or tried to get that point across before, but it was a bit different. And certainly when I'm on my podcast and I have like clips or whatever, I'm not always saying something completely different every time, right? You know, so we can't, it's it's good. People need to hear something multiple times for it to sink in. So don't feel like, oh, I, I've already said that once. Also, you know, not everyone has seen it, right? We can't, we don't know how many people are seeing each thing we put out there. Great points. Yeah. Um, another really great point. We have no idea who's seeing what and when. I mean, we have some idea because we can see consistent engagement and that kind of thing. But there are just, this is overall what I would say about the repetitive thing. Chances are what you think is happening is not what's happening. There are just way too many contributing factors. Most people care a lot less about the repetition than you think. The people who do, don't worry about them. It's not going to be the majority of people. Um, if what you do is good, you can sort of safely assume that that however scared you are about it, they're a lot less concerned with it because there are just so many factors that that sort of contribute to that. I, I, I will say with the with the kind of saying the same thing a thousand different ways. This is this is what I was saying before we before we properly started this call. Musicians nowadays, like there's there's so much advice out there, and there's so many there are so many different paths that can work and that don't work, and all of that. I have found in I reckon eighty percent of cases what they need more than anything 
else. What what musicians need for social media is they need just endless amount of encouragement. <laughs> That's actually one of the main reasons why I've switched to doing a lot more of the encouraging stuff rather than just the sort of always doing the practical advice. Because the practical advice, there's only so much advice that you can give before it becomes not necessarily relevant to the artist. There are fundamental things that they need to understand. And then the rest of it is, you know, learn these fundamentals, go and experiment, learn how to um, iterate correctly and, and learn how to understand what you're what you're analyzing. And then you just need the encouragement to just keep going and keep going and keep going. And this is, I, I know I said this before we, we pressed record, but this is one of the reasons why I've been working more closely with musicians instead of working less closely just with tons of musicians. Uh, I hope that makes sense. Because like so much of the game now is learn the basics, then figure out a way to make it work for you. And the 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 challenge along the way there, or, or one of the biggest challenges is just being able to stay in it, like the mental game. It is so tough to keep going mentally. The practical side of it, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's not complicated. You know, it's not complicated at all. It's just, it's just hard. And the oh, yeah. encouragement no, is, yeah. So many people, they know exactly what to do, but they're not doing it. And it's a multitude of reasons. It can be, it can be disorganization. It can be lack of time, but a lot of times it's lack of confidence. And, you know, just having that person in their corner telling them, no, this is good. Like you may feel like it doesn't have enough likes and therefore you just want to stop and, and bury your head in the sand and say social media is terrible, um, you know, but giving them that encouragement. And I think the biggest thing that I see is related to video. A lot mm. of artists do not want to be on video. It stops them. They want to be on video. But then when it comes down to it, there's a million reasons why they don't actually get on video. And I'm curious because your posts generally don't use video. And we've had a conversation in the past about how <laughs> how long it can take to get create posts that are on video. And so I'm curious kind of the advice that you give around around this with artists that you work with and if you have any artists that say like I just don't want to do video and how you get around that yeah sure so I think that you know this but my current strategy is not a, a strategy to hide my face I am more than happy to to be on video I used to do talking head videos these are just more fun for me they're more effective and they you know, they perform better so yeah totally um, and so why not do that with the video thing so i used to be the kind of person who would try and look for ways to ways to to, to sort of say okay you don't want to do video let's find a different approach for you and and in a lot of cases that's still what i'll do because there are so many approaches that work but when it comes to showing up on video the advice that i give nowadays is learn to be on video. That is that is the the number one thing because it is unbelievably like the payoff is unbelievably big if you if you get comfortable with it. I am maximum introverted, like 100% on the on the spectrum of introversion, you know, in in a lot of ways. And it took me, I think I said this to you last time, it took me like 2 years to work up the courage to start getting on camera, um start getting on video and it has just been one of the single most I mean, imagine like I I wouldn't be on this this call right now, you know, if I sure. if I couldn't do it. And um the, the way to to get into it or the way that has worked for me and the way that I kind of help people get into it is to just take the smallest possible step that you can. So what I did was actually, there was a point where I was kind of sharing music clips like way back in the day and I was sort of building up to video. This is one of the things I did. I used to record my Logic screen and it wasn't, it was just like recording it with the camera. So the audio was terrible. And I would start slowly introducing my face, you know, like I'd, I'd sort of have my phone and I'd be showing the thing and then I'd sort of slowly just bring my face into it just for a second, you know, something like that. And then when I was doing kind of what I'm doing now, but but a few years ago, the way that I I got into it then was I started doing those reels where I wasn't talking, you know, I didn't have to talk. I could just be on the video and I could point to text, you know, it was incredibly cringy. Um, you can probably still find them if you like scroll all the way back. It's so, so embarrassing and, and so, so cringy, but also who cares? That was something that I did for a little while. And then eventually I was like, I'm going to just try and say something you know i'm just going to try and say something and I, I i did and it was so stiff and awkward and and uh, you know it's it's just this is the natural progression you just have to you take a small a really really small step one that one that's maybe a little uncomfortable but not so uncomfortable that it's like a huge leap 
right? Just a, just a very small step. And once you take that small step and you realize that it didn't kill you and that you're, you're actually fine and you maybe even kind of enjoyed it a little bit, then you say, maybe I can take another small step, you know, and you keep doing that. And then, you know, five steps down the line, you're this super relaxed, comfortable person on camera, not saying that's me. Um, in a in a sort of you know scripted setting or whatever, but you can you can really easily or really um, you can kind of surprise yourself at just how far you can go by taking these really really tiny steps. I would again reiterate if you don't like showing your face on camera, if the reason is like if there's a fear based reason and it's if if you're really honest with yourself, it's not you know like like is it really a big thing in the face of you know your entire music career where you want all of this attention and all of this? Is it really a big deal? And if you say no, it's not. I'm just a bit scared, you know, because it's hard to, to do that, then I would very strongly encourage you to just take these small steps until you get good at it, because it will just, it will just pay you back so, so, so much. You know, if it's, if there's a different reason, I'd, I can't even think of what the reason would be. Maybe that's a different story. But first, first big thing is I don't want to be on camera. What do I do? Learn to be on camera. How do I do that? Take very, very small, simple steps. Show yourself a little bit. Don't say anything. Just put some text on the screen. Eventually move up to talking. You know, you can script things if you want, if that makes you feel better. Um, that's what I do. I script everything that I do. And then if you if you like the idea of this, but you're just terrified of it right now, you can work your way up to just picking up your phone and being like, hey guys, blah, 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 and be super casual and become one of those personalities that people want to tune into every day because they just love your energy. I hope that's I hope that's kind of clear. It's just small steps. Yeah. No, that's really good. And and you know, you can easily put a bunch of clips together too. Like, you know, those fast edits that we were talking about earlier. Um, but when you're when you want to say something but you don't want to seem like you're reading or whatever, you know, you can say a few sentences and then stop, stay a few and then oh, put them together absolutely. super easily, right? And that's what I do because sometimes my brain doesn't work as fast as I want it to. <laughs> And no, I don't want to no. seem like I'm reading, right? You know, so I script some of it out. And then the other parts, I'm, I want it to seem casual and natural. And then I can always just put three clips together to make a minute and a half thing. That's, that's excellent advice. That's what I do as well. Um, even my, even my uh, audio for the animations, I do it in clips. I'll say musicians and then I'll stop it. And then I'll say the next sentence because I want it to be as smooth as possible. And um, and then I just edit it after. That's what most people do. That's what a lot of YouTubers do. That's perfectly acceptable. You do not have to be, you do not have to, to, to just be perfect. You just press record and you're just perfect. That does not, never has to happen. Um, you never have or to What you could do is get on a podcast like this and you have, you know, it, you get what you get, right? I mean, that, I think for me, it was just like trial by fire when I started doing a podcast and then eventually a video podcast. And it's like, yeah, there were some awkward pauses. There were some places where I couldn't think of the answer to a question that, you know, and you just, you get used to it and it's like life went on and you're fine. And then you kind of feel mostly bulletproof. Not to, you're never totally bulletproof because something can always happen, you know? True. But, but yeah, I think you're right. I think the, the biggest sort of switch for me has been being okay with things not being perfect. I know that sounds really generic, but you, you know, if, if you listened to say this podcast, me talking or me on like a, a call or whatever, if that's what my content was, people would tune out because I'm like, um, uh, um, um, let me think, uh, let me, let me go back on what I just said and fix it and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think in, in these settings, it's, it's really helpful to do this because it gets you comfortable with, like you kind of said, realizing that those mistakes, they don't really mean much at all. They make you more human as well, but they also, they don't, they don't kill you. You know, they, they, they kind of help you become more comfortable with being wrong about stuff, making mistakes, having to pause, um, you know, sitting in the, in those sort of awkward moments and just it being, it being okay. You know, I'm like you, my head does not work fast unless I'm really in the zone. Sometimes I talk and I'm like, am I a genius? Because I just say things that I just, I can't even, I don't even know how I know them. But most of the time it's like, are you okay? You know, did you get any sleep last night? Because my my answers to questions, as as you can hear, as anyone watching or listening to this can hear, I'm so roundabout, you know, and I have to really like in order to get good messages out, I have to really think about the answers. And and that's why you people listening right now are getting are getting a very messy version of it. But me. see, this is why I like long form, because for me, I like hearing the roundabout way that you got to your answer because it gives me all the just, you know, what's going on in your mind and like all the details and everything. 
meaning. All of that's interesting to me, not just the pat answer or the final answer. I, I agree. Yeah. Podcasts and long form stuff is interesting. Totally agree. I, I also like the pauses on podcasts as well, because it, it sort of shows you that it's okay. You know, it, it mm -hmm. sort of gives you this, it gives you this kind of permission to just relax a bit and take your time on an answer. You know, this is a setting where it's okay to have five, 10 seconds of dead air. That's actually acceptable. It's kind of part of the charm of a, of a podcast or something. Musicians should do podcasts. I, I mean, I know a lot do, but a lot more should. It's, it's really, really uh, beneficial for sort of developing your confidence around showing up in, in a video setting, in an audio setting. I agree. I mean, I remember the first radio interview I did way back in the day. Um, but it was like, it was, it was, I think it was on the phone or something, you know, and I was so, I don't know. It's like, how could I have been so lame at answering questions about myself? Cause I had no practice, you know? So going on, I'm like, I know the answers to these questions, but I hadn't thought about how I wanted to say them and, you know, the best way to get my thoughts across and everything. And so going on to podcasts really does it, it, a lot of podcasts, you know, they don't have a huge listenership and you can, you can get a chance to practice not in front of a giant audience where you, you know, you might be worried that you were going to really crash and burn. Totally. You know, that actually, that, that, that's a great point. And it brings up another great point. Um, just going back to musicians with with sort of um, being afraid to get out there, you know, being afraid to get on camera and that kind of thing. When you do this stuff, I think that the the assumption is that if you do something that's, you know, you make a mistake or, or, or whatever, that the world is going to see it and you're going to be exposed for this idiot or this fraud or this whatever. And the reality is that, like, especially if you're just starting out and you're kind of afraid to put yourself out there, you are not, it's very, it's mostly very safe in terms of, um, being subject to to hurt online. Obviously, there are horrible people online, but it's not easy to reach millions of people. You know, it is it is not that you put yourself out there and if you're if you're not perfect, you're gonna the world's gonna see you for the not perfect person that you are, the imperfect person that you are. It is much more you get 10 views. Maybe 10 people see it or five people see it twice, you know, and no one cares of course but if it was like if it was so easy to get views like if it was so easy that you could just make a video and it would just reach a million people there would be a lot more successful social media you know a lot more successful musicians on social media so that's that's the other thing is that this starting up on social media and, and getting into it properly you have a lot more room for making mistakes than you think like a lot more because chances are a lot less people will see it initially than what you think. My my podcast right now, just, just for full transparency, I started it, I've done uh, 13, 14 episodes or something like that. I have an audience on Instagram of 80 something thousand people. I've maybe got 300 listeners per episode or something like that. And I think that's great, just to be clear. I'm super, super grateful for that. But I, I kind of thought I've got a huge audience on, on Instagram relative to, to what I have on Spotify, which is tiny. I'm going to be able to build this thing pretty fast. You know, I'm going to be able to build this thing up pretty fast. I'll just get a bunch of people from over there to come over there. The reality is, is that not that many people have heard it relative to how many people could have heard it. And this is always the case. This is always the case with with sort of when you're starting out and that kind of thing. It is not, you just have to start because once you start, you'll realize like, oh, I actually, I actually want to reach more people. You know, I, I was afraid of reaching people initially because I don't want to get laughed at. Now I'm like, how can I reach more? And that's, that's the game. <laughs> So yeah, I just wanted to I kind think, of, yeah. You know, by the time that you get to the point where you are reaching a ton of people, hopefully by that time you've developed a thick skin because there will be those trolls and people saying weird oh, yeah. stuff. And especially if you run ads, let me tell you, uh, <laughs> you yeah. will get the people that are just ridiculous human beings. Yes, that is, that is very, very true. You do, you do come to, uh, I'm sure that you know this, but, but um, you do come to realize as well that it is almost always just a like this is this is such a real thing you know the the whole like um someone with a private account with you know next to no followers and and um they they don't have any posts or they've got a private account or whatever no profile picture they're the ones who are more likely to say horrible things and you start to after a while because you know I get it too I get I get um you know the fact that I am trying to put something out there and it reaches people automatically means that there will be some people who just hate you. Oh yeah. Um, you're a scammer. You're you're giving false hope to musicians. I know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And uh, you know what? Like that's that's a that's a thing that I think about quite a lot because I do think about this music game is really hard. 
you know, it is it is really hard. And and I would say that in a lot of ways, it's not as hard as it as it kind of has to be for a lot of musicians. But it is really hard. Like you do have to work hard in order to achieve these things. And I feel like it is a a tough thing to be encouraging and educate and show them what's possible without kind of being like, you know, I, I kind of always feel the need to be like, it's really hard work though. Like you have to, you have to work really hard. You have to blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm kind of at this point now where I'm like, you're a responsible adult. You know, like like most most of the musicians who are seeing my stuff and your stuff, they're responsible adults, and they we can give the encouragement and we can try and you know tell them how it is without just fear mongering and being like this is so hard, this is so difficult, blah 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 blah. Because when you just constantly tell people how hard it is and you don't provide any encouragement or any solutions or anything, and you're just constantly talking about this is so difficult, this is so difficult, it scares them off. You know, it scares these people off, and sometimes it's it's these people who could have done really well, they don't get the opportunity to do really well because we've scared them off. But I've found, and and I feel like I'm talking about myself a lot in this this episode, I'm, I'm sorry, but I get a lot of messages f- about the encouraging messages that have said crazy things, crazy things like, this has literally kept me going. You know, like mm-hmm. I always want to give up and this has kept me going. I've had people say, just because I've watched these videos and been encouraged to keep going, I've now had X kind of success. And that to me is validation that this is this is definitely a good path to go down. This is actually helping people, which is crazy. They really need the encouragement. But also you're a responsible adult and you can be responsible for your own, the whole like false hope thing. It's like, like, you can figure out, you can decode this messaging. It's not, it's not like we're not trying to manipulate people by showing them what's possible and 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 providing hope and that kind of thing. You can you can figure out that you've got to take personal responsibility for working hard. Like that's just a given. Everything in life that that is good requires hard work, you know, to achieve something like that. It's just yeah. it's something I've been thinking about lately. Yeah. Well, I think the the state of social media though. I think has kind of fed into that because I have plenty of ads that get rejected because they say, oh, you're providing false hope. You're providing false promises. And I'm like, did I promise that this, you know, one of these income streams that I'm recommending would make them X number of dollars? No, Mm. I did Mm. not, you know, but I think the feeling is now like people are just so scared or at least social media platforms are so scared that, you know, we're providing fake information that, Mm. and it's interesting for us to talk about this here because, you know, we both experienced this and it's, it's something that unless you're in, in this world that we are, we're, creating content for musicians like no one else understands what kind of pressure we're under in that way like people are saying things like oh you know who who do you think you are telling them they can make this much money in music or anything like that and it's like i I am not telling you that definitively you will do x but i have done this and i have helped all these other people do this and you know and i believe you can too you know that's kind of the goal of our content but a lot of times People are trying to shut us down because I don't know. Like, people don't want hope in the world. They 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 just want us to be completely practical. I don't know. Yeah, I I, I don't know exactly either. But I, I know that there are from the social media side, but from the actual your ads getting rejected, I, I can't really speak to that. But but I can can say like people have a lot of a lot of limiting beliefs, um, especially around this stuff. And you know there are this is what I think when we communicate this stuff, and you know we have our own experiences with artists and musicians and we have helped um, artists and musicians get results and we see how it works and that kind of thing but there are a lot of musicians out there that they're kind of never satisfied with kind of anything on on these platforms and i think you know if you provide hope then it's false hope but then if you tell them how hard it is and how hard they've got to work then it's um it's negative energy you know that kind of thing and and it, i feel like it really comes back down to beliefs around social media and maybe their own capabilities and maybe you know the industry and 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 all of that and you know there are things to be concerned about for sure i'm 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 not denying that at all but i think at the end of the day i think we're probably both the kinds of people who okay this is a potential pathway challenge accepted Let's see if we can figure this out. And if we can figure this out, and if we can we can show evidence that this actually works, which we can, then we can share it. And the people who have done the inner work to to take ownership of their response uh, of their of their situation and to you know they're they're willing to do the work and all of that, it'll reach the right people, you know. And and you kind of learn to tune out all of the too far gone limiting belief stuff. I yeah, guess. I definitely used to get caught up in the like I can't. I felt responsible for their 
their inner beliefs and what was yes. keeping them from moving forward. And I, you know, eventually I just had to be like, look, like I know that when people don't have these limiting beliefs or when they've worked through them, they can achieve X. Therefore, you know, it is no longer my responsibility. I can try to encourage them. I try to help them with these limiting beliefs. But in the end of the day, it's not up to me to pull everybody along. I can pull the ones along that want to go. Exactly. That's exactly it. That That is, I mean, I'm sure that you can, you can attest to this as well. But every single coach or mentor or whoever in this space or in the creative space in general that I have ever spoken to has said that that it's the same for them as 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 it is for me and that is that the people that really have their own drive and motivation and sort of self start that self starter identity. They're the ones who who they take the information and they really get some value from it and they apply it and they are willing to sort of learn how to build on that information instead of just saying you know they take the information and they try it once and it doesn't work and therefore it's all hopeless. You really have to have that that sort of self motivation in order to be able to make this stuff work. Otherwise, all you're going to do is look for evidence that it doesn't. You know, if you're the, that kind of person. And everything, everywhere you look, I even have, I, I realize the time, I'm sorry, but I, I really quickly, I have so many people who they are on social media and they're actually not doing too badly. They're, they're, they're kind of growing and all of that. And they're looking that, you know, they come to me and they look at their results and they say, things aren't working. Like things aren't working. Like it should be faster or, or you know, I want this to be better or it just doesn't feel like anything's moving. And I'm like, from from my perspective, you're doing great. You know, everything's going up over over time. Your Spotify is going up. Your numbers are going up. Your views are, are, are great. Um, you know, you're reaching maybe a few thousand people every day. That's amazing. And sometimes if they're um, sort of willing to, to hear that, they'll kind of take a step back and go, things are actually going not too badly. You know, it's just that they have this feeling that um, or this this belief that things should be different or that the, this, this feeling that kind of makes them feel as though they're stuck when they're not mm -hmm. um, that's maybe a conversation for another time but um yeah the limiting beliefs thing is is a really tough one to overcome especially with musicians there's there's a lot there <laughs> a lot there yeah and i think that's why they need someone in their corner working through it with them um and not just you know like we were talking about before like just getting this information like you know you can get the information on how to get it done on social media but having that person in your corner and helping you analyze did this work did that work what does working actually mean all that stuff and so i I'd love to let everybody know that's listening and watching how to connect with you in case they want to have you in their corner working with them. Yeah, sure. So um, Instagram is a good place to start. That's um, the.awakened.creative. Um, there's a bunch of bunch of stuff that you can watch there. Um, at the moment, I'm kind of in the middle of um, creating a new thing. So at the moment, I have a, I'm available for one-to-one -one coaching for a short time. Um, by the time this comes out, I'll probably still be available for that. Consultations, you can you can book them anytime. I can help you get direction. Um, by the time this this episode is out, I will have a group coaching thing, which this will be the first time I've done this sort of properly. Um, and this will be taking musicians through the sort of branding process or the artist identity process, figuring out the identity that is showing up on social media, all stuff about um, modern content approaches, the ways to show up and the ways to, to communicate that artist identity, releasing music, um, social media growth, even some productivity stuff. And I'm going to be there to actually keep you accountable and keep you actually going because that is, once you learn the fundamental stuff, that is like 95% of it is to just keep going and um, and yeah, learn how to analyze stuff, learn learn what patterns to look for and, and you're good. So those are the things that are available at the moment. By the time August rolls around, I think you said August, um, I might even have some more stuff. Uh, actually, I, I should say this, um, my website has all of that information. So if you go to theawakenedcreative.co, .co, that's .co, not .com. You'll find everything that you need there. And of course, your podcast, which I didn't even know you oh, had. Yeah. What, what is it called? <laughs> I just started. So it's just called the Awakened Creative Co podcast. Sorry, I, I, I forgot to mention that to people. It's on Spotify. So you can just type in the Awakened Creative Co podcast. You can also go to my website and it'll there'll be a link that will take you there directly. And I, if you prefer to read, I send out big newsletters every week, big sort of deep dives into music marketing or personal growth stuff. Or, oh, I love know. hearing that because I know we've had conversations in the past about how email is my thing and you know, you've helped me out a little bit with social media and I helped you out a little bit with email. So that's really cool. Amazing. Yeah, it's it's email is great. It's still still great for everyone. Always going to be one of those things. I think that for, for ages, everyone says, you know, it's dead or whatever. But I just think it's going to continue to be very, very valuable. I still have tons of people reading like it's the, the evidence is there. Yeah, me too. I agree. 
Okay, you guys, theawakencreative.co. Go check that out. Check him out on Instagram. I see his stuff pop up every day for me. Um, and it's it's great. I love it. So, and so many great comments that I see under it from musicians. So uh, why don't you guys be one of them and, and comment on one of, one of his posts? Thank you so much, Alex. This has been so great. I knew we'd have plenty to talk about for a second interview and we did. We always do. So thank you so much for sharing everything that you did today. Thank you, Bree. Thanks for having me. It was great. It was just endless stuff to talk about. Thanks for listening to The Profitable Musician Show. I would love to know your takeaways and aha moments from this episode. Leave me a comment over at ProfitableMusician.com so I can bring you more of the information, interviews, and resources that you love. Thanks to Rondi Fay, one of my Academy members, for providing the music for our podcast. You can check her out at rondifay.com. That's R-A-N-D-I-F-A-Y.com. Just remember, knowledge is power, but without implementation, it is useless. And inspiration without action is merely entertainment. But I know you're not just a dreamer, you are a doer. And I promise I'll be here every week to support you and remind you that you can be a profitable musician.